This year, I got to make the April Fools campaign for Formlabs. Back in 2022, they had the iconic Form 2D April Fools video. Introducing the Form 2D, a professional printer that puts our decade of innovation onto paper. We've come to the conclusion that almost all the complexity comes from one thing, and that's the third dimension. If we can remove that, we can revolutionize 3D printing. Which I think is S tier. The 3D printing world does not hold back for April Fool's jokes, so the bar was high. Dropping an audio file right into the window and then slice it. I got the chance to do this as well last year of a fake product called Butter Resin, which weirdly enough came to me in a dream but I was only able to get a few photos because I had less than a week to work on it. That did great, but this year I had about three months to get this together, so I wanted to live up to the Form 2D name. What I ended up on was a product that does the complete opposite of Formlabs' mission statement, which is to build the tools that make it possible for anyone to bring their ideas to life. I wanted a machine that would make it possible for anyone to take their bad ideas out of this world. And from there, the vision was born. I was gonna make the... Uh, I was gonna build the the okay never mind just cut to the intro in order to make a great product the first step is always research so I spent a lot of time doing some professional scholarly research on the mechanism used to destroy the parts I looked at industrial shredders, garbage disposals, wood chippers, but for maximum noise and chaos, I ended up going with a good old blender. I found this $230 blender, which already had a hood, so that was perfect. I did like the concept of a wood chipper type chute on the side that would shoot out the debris onto the CEO as he was talking about it, so I also bought a leaf blower. Leaf blower? I bear leaf nowhere. Get out! <laughs> The Form 2D was actually repurposed from a Form 2, so I wanted to build a D Form 1 using an old Form 1. So I found one on eBay for pretty cheap. It was in pretty rough shape and it says it was only for parts, but that was perfect for this project. Now to disassemble both and find a way to transfer the internals of the blender into Deform 1. Get it? Into Deform... Deform 1? I'm sorry. Now that everything's apart, time to 3D scan the blender housing so I can design the adapter to mount the internals in the new body. I used some 3D scanning spray to make sure that the black, glossy surfaces captured correctly. Then I brought everything into Fusion 360 where I manually aligned all the scans and designed the adapter that would hold the blender motor inside the Form 1 body. I then printed the entire thing in one go on a Formlabs Form 4L with black resin, which looked amazing right out of the printer. And as much as I would like for this to be a sponsored video by the Blender Company, it is not. So goodbye. Now, time to make it look like an actual Formlabs product with the signature orange. The Form 2D had a simple laser cut piece of orange acrylic, but I was struggling to find a way to make the Deform 1 orange without compromising the clarity. I didn't have enough time or resources to vacuum form or mold a hood from this complex geometry from scratch, so I was settled on somehow making the existing hood and blender orange. And I really didn't want to mess with dye baths or spray coatings, so I found this clear orange self-adhesive vinyl that I could try wrapping the plastic with. Cause how hard could that be? Turns out, really f***ing hard. 
And it wasn't even just a skill issue, I, I mean, it was a skill issue, but also, this no-name brand of vinyl I got had no information on what it was actually made of. You see, actual vinyl stretches to fit compound curves, which is how cars get so perfectly wrapped. But this, even with a hairdryer or heat gun, did not stretch and would just melt. So, time to explore other options. Which was devastating, cause... It looks so good though, come on. But while I figure that out, let's get these printed markings off the blender. I found that the easiest way to remove them was to just scrape at them with a straight razor blade. <laughs> oh, tight, 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 yeah! And because it left so many fine scratches, I just buffed those out with some polishing compound. Then I did the exact same thing on the other side and gave the entire blender one bit polish. After the vinyl wrap failure, I wanted to try some sort of spray. But because this would be a lot more permanent, I wanted to do some tests first on some scrap pieces of acrylic. I tested Tamaya colors translucent orange, translucent red, clear orange, and clear red. Both translucent options looked frosted, so those were a no-go. The clear orange was a bit too yellow, which is exactly why I got the red, so I can blend and layer the two to hopefully get closer to the Formlabs orange. I tested the order that the two were sprayed and how many layers of each until I got it perfect. Here goes nothing. The leaf blower obviously won't fit inside, so I made a hidden duct that goes into the pedestal and blows debris from a separate hopper, so it won't actually be blowing the parts it shreds. The first reason was I didn't have enough time to design and integrate a mechanism that would drop the actual shredded parts into the blower, and the second reason was I thought it would be even funnier to have a comically large amount of debris shootout seemingly coming out of nowhere. So let's cut the holes in the shell for the chute, the inner ductwork, and some of the parts that were intersecting with the printed adapter. Adapter? I hardly know her. Never gets old. My ears hurt. There's already one button on the Form 1, but it's a low current momentary switch. I wanted a latching switch that would stay on when I pressed it and that could handle direct AC current for the blender and for the leaf blower. I wasn't planning on using the LCD, so I just cut a second hole right next to the first button and bought two latching buttons of the same size. And the little acrylic piece was see-through for the LCD, so I just painted the back of it black to block out any light from passing through. Oh, and remember those labels I took off? I printed some replacement ones with the Formlabs logo with black resin and I used the layer lines to my advantage to make it look like brushed aluminum with a little bit of Stuart Semple mirror paint. That stuff is magic. The back of the Form 1 had a label and I knew it would bother me if I didn't switch it out, so I drew up a quick one in Illustrator, added some little easter eggs, printed it out, and slapped it on. And for the next part, next part. Don't wanna talk about it, I'm sick of talking about it I'm gonna sing about it instead uh, And took a jigsaw to the stand Cut a hole in it just like I planned I put the blender on top, it's gonna be unstoppable And now the chaos can begin Designed a hopper, I barely know her And it attaches right to the blower Held in with tape and screws There's nothing to lose It's gotta work once then it's over Blender? Oh my goodness.
And now that I knew it works, I 3D printed a lot of random parts to blend up. And while it was still pristine, we took some studio photo shots of it blending and blowing. Hold that lid a little lower. Then it was time. Max, the CEO of Formlabs who had agreed to this months prior, had no context of what I was planning other than this quick storyboard pitch I drew. Hi, I'm Max. For the last 13 years, Formlabs has set out to make the tools to bring your ideas to life. We're all about looking forward, but at the speed at which we're able to empower creators to turn their ideas into reality, sometimes you just have to take a step back. That's why I'm excited to introduce the Deform One. The Deform One isn't here to build your ideas, it's here to unmake them. If you ever feel that you've brought too much into this world, now, with just the push of a button, you can really take them out. Equip with state of the art carbide spreading blade and quickly select the power to conform the design of the carbide and the materials like polymer, metal, leftover load, and all the prototyping and that's. <clears throat> and that's not all. Thanks to our patented unprinting process and free post-form software, the automatic disposal feature self-empties the debuild chamber as fast as it can destroy the parts. And whether you're undoing a mistake, rethinking a prototype, or just making space for more creativity, the Deform One has you covered. The Deform One. For when you don't want to just think outside the box, you want to destroy the box entirely. So that was the vision from the very beginning. And assuming you saw the final video, it didn't really go as planned, but we made it work. We workshopped the script a little bit. <laughs> but not every idea, but sometimes you realize not every idea should be in this world. <laughs> Deserves a place in this world. <laughs> and then we also added a running gag where he would be wearing a new piece of PPE every time we cut back to him. The crazy part was, and this was unscripted, Formlabs had just launched new tough material like a week prior to this, and in the keynote they demoed this material by blending it and its predecessor. For poops and giggles, we threw that same part in there along with the other prints, and somehow it miraculously survived. Holy <laughs> the, the unblendable one is not blended. It actually worked. It, it, it's totally just sitting there solid and the rest is completely shredded. That was like running for like 10 or 20 seconds, right? All right, we gotta This is the keynote. It's seriously just like fully intact and everything else is powder. How did that happen? It's seriously unblendable. Like look, look at this. I don't understand. Things didn't really start to go wrong until the blowing portion. So Max had never seen this blower turn on before, at all. And we only had one take because I filled up the entire hopper, which I had never done that much before, so we did not know how it was going to go. He didn't know how strong it was going to be and it caught him off guard and ended up blowing off his entire face shield. Uh, and that was our take. It ended up being fine, we just cut to this Fallout style, please stand by, technical difficulty screen with Max in it, and then it cut back to a more disheveled looking Max. This is gonna make the last line really good. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody sucks! If you haven't seen the final video yet, go check it out here and also linked below. Aside from the cleanup, this was such a fun project. Huge thanks to everyone at Formlabs who helped me bring my vision to life, and to everyone on my Patreon who is helping to support this channel. Anyway, that's the video. Subscribe if you want. I'm gonna go clean the resin dust out of my lungs now. Bye.